try to make it work here. All right, so if you don't know who I am, my name is Jason, and uh, I am a uh, hacker. Uh, I'm a bug bounty hunter. I am 29th on the bug crowd leaderboard, actually, not 28th anymore. And uh, I'm a proud dad and husband and a gamer. Um, I run a security team at uh, Ubisoft, uh, so I'm pretty hyped about that. But um, yeah, let's uh, let's jump right into it. So today we're going to track a new project, and I thought I wanted to do something special for you all um, today, and that is that we're going to do a project I've never demoed before uh, at uh, any of my workshops, because um, it's kind of what would I say? It's kind of like a hidden bounty. There, there are a class of uh, hidden bounties that exist out there. They're, they're basically responsible, responsible disclosure programs that pay if you find a critical bug. Um, and they're public, and they're not like really hiding, but they don't really advertise themselves. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drop one to you guys um, so uh, we can start hacking together. And we'll just do the methodology, um, and, uh, and we'll keep notes in XMind. Uh, and so uh, we'll do that. OK, so let me drop out of the slides here. Uh, so today's target, and uh, I'm not going to tweet this or anything, um, but today's target is Office Depot. Uh, so Office Depot runs a responsible disclosure program that is scoped to www.officedepot.com and is at this link here. Um, it's public. And one of the things that people don't talk about is that uh, is really that um, they will accept probably high critical uh, bugs, right? So if you find a P1 or a P2, um, you can submit via this responsible disclosure form and, uh, and possibly get a bounty. Yeah, people are saying that the stream is in the chat. The stream is just dropping. Okay, uh, give us a second here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, okay, it's probably YouTube. So maybe switch over to Twitch, guys. Uh, okay, so this is the program we're gonna work on today. And um, it's uh, Office Depot, Office, Office Max. And uh, like I said, it's a semi-public uh, bounty program. Uh, and you can see here that in their scope, um, these are the scope domains. Um, any property that's not owned or managed by Office Depot may be accepted at Office Depot's discretion, but is not guaranteed. Um, so you can still submit things that are outside of this scope. Um, and uh, that's what we're going to work on today. So we're going to copy, if you've ever seen any of my other streams before, a basic template I have here. Um, and uh, this is how I track my work. So um, I use this program called XMind, uh, and you can download it. There's a trial version. And uh, we're going to uh, fill this out for, um, for this client here. So we're just going to say project OD. We'll just call it Office Depot or Office Max. Um, and what we're going to do here is we'll nuke all of these. Uh, this was old recon data for Tesla. And uh, yeah, we'll just nuke these. We'll nuke these. Um, and I want to keep my template here. Um, so I'll just throw this somewhere else. Because uh, this has all of my like uh, asking questions to myself and notes and pieces of methodologies I care about, right? So um, I want to keep this so I don't have to copy and paste it later. Um, so we'll just keep this down here for right now. OK, so Project Office Depot roots. And then we'll nuke all of this. 
and we'll start going. Okay, so uh, first thing in the methodology is to identify our root domain. So we already have two off the bat. We're going to do officedepot.com, and we're going to do, we know there's one subdomain in scope. So officedepot.com, and we know there's one subdomain already in here. Now let's uh, let's kick off some of the tooling here. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is start. Um, well, we're going to look for acquisitions and ASNs of this company. So uh, we're going to go ahead and use uh, what we call uh, we got the scope domains. We're going to use Crunchbase to find the acquisitions. So let's see if we can find any related companies or brands related to Office Depot. And let's do Office Depot. OK, so Office Depot, 11 acquisitions here. Uh, investors, acquisitions. OK, so quite a few, um, but pretty old, pretty stale, right? So. Uh, Complete Office Solutions was their last acquisition in 2017. Um, so CompuCom in 2017 as well, Office Max they took over in 2013. So the older these acquisitions get, the less likely we are to really get a ton out of them. Um, so what we're looking for is, you know, maybe sub two year acquisitions uh, to us, uh, but they could be quite useful. Um, so you can go to each one of these and open them in new tabs. And you can grab their main domain from here, which they'll probably redirect, um, but that's OK. So we'll just go to acquisitions and dump some of these in there. CompuCom, these were their most recent ones. Oop, a lot of tabs open. Office Max. So we'll grab these last three most recent ones. And that could be a mistake, right? Later on, could suck. Uh, could suck that we uh, we maybe miss an old one. And the reason we're grabbing acquisitions is because uh, we're going to do a large scale bounty on this target. Um, Complete Office or CompuCom or Offumax, these acquisitions might not have, you know, basically decommissioned all of the infrastructure on these domains. Um, and so since it's owned by officedepot.com um, now, or that company, Office Depot, uh, it still might be somehow connected because of legacy systems. It still might have stuff on them that you know reveals customer data of these old uh, domains. Um, so they're possibly in scope for us uh, to, to work from. So last three acquisitions, we're good to go. Um, now we're going to grab the ASNs, um, the autonomous system numbers uh, for uh, this company. So I always do this manually first. Um, you can use automation and tooling, um, but uh, I normally do it manually. So bgp.he.net um, is the site that I use. Uh, and then I can go Office Depot. And then we have a couple here. So the autonomous system number is a collection of all of their IP, uh, is a reference number for all of their uh, IP space, basically. So uh, if I click inside some of their autonomous system numbers, um, I can see these are their uh, IPv4 IP ranges, right? It's just, a, it's just a reference identifier for all of their registered IP space. Um, so we know AS14898 is their um, is one of their ASNs. So we'll grab this. And let's see if there's anything else. Uh, definitely not Office of the President. That could get you in trouble. Um, Office Depot AS number. I don't think that's what we're looking for doesn't have any IPv4 peers anyway, or references anyway. IPv Office Depot Europe. I cannot confirm or deny if this is a thing. 
Um, we could Google it. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to stay away from it for right now. I'm not sure it's actually in our in our scope right now. Okay. Uh, I think really this just one autonomous system number is what we're going to find here. Now remember, there could be some stuff still referenced to the older ones, like Office Max, but you never know. Uh, nope. What else did we have? We had uh, Complete Office, Office Max. Yeah, Office Max has an autonomous system number, but everything's been transferred over pretty much. CompuCom. see here does have some autonomous system numbers okay uh, so I'm gonna grab this one CompuCon system so I'm gonna grab these two I'm gonna put them under CompuCom even though we have a strict ASN category and last one was uh, complete office. Let's check that. No. Cool. All right, so that's phase is pretty much done. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to run these uh, we want to run these, right? These are representations of IP space. We want to run some tooling on them to see what other seed domains we can get um, out of these ranges. And one way to do that is to use a mass. And a mass is subtool Intel. And what these will do is it'll take uh, an AS number. What the heck? Okay. One four eight nine eight. And it'll go out and scan that large piece of IP space, uh, all of the addresses, all of the IPv4, and it will check for sites that respond to uh, HTTPS or SSL connections. And then what it'll do is it'll parse out of the certificate data any uh, domains that it finds, any seed domains. Uh, so this is a mass that we're using right now, a mass. You can grab uh, a mass from uh, github.com slash OWASH slash a mass. Um, it's basically, it's a, it's a tool to do reconnaissance on domains. Um, it scrapes, uh, it scrapes stuff from, uh, it scrapes domains from all of these sources. It also does DNS brute forcing. Um, it also does certificate pools, which we're doing right now. It searches uh, for archives of the site. So um, it's got a lot of data sources. It's basically a whole framework for discovering uh, recon scope. All right, so while that's running, it's already started to give some back. You can see that inside of their uh, AS14898, um, uh, we do have officedepot.com, but we have several other things that um, are also in their autonomous systems now uh, that are seed domains. So we're going to grab these, and we're going to put these in our roots. And then this one is actually subdomain, so it goes under officedepot.com. Cool. So the more seeds or roots, um, I guess I should rename this node to seeds or roots, I guess. The more seeds or roots we get, the more subdomains we're, enab we're enabled to enumerate. Uh, the more subdomains we are able to enumerate, the more websites we're going to find. The more websites we find, the more chance we find of getting into their infrastructure via uh, whatever, a web bug, and, you know, server-side, uh, server you know, RCE or something, or, you know, a, 
service bug, default credentials on you know, some service or something like that. So uh, the larger we build this scope up, uh, the better um, it's going to be for us. All right, got two more. OK. So we have a whole bunch of roots now. We're going to let that continue running in the background, uh, amass Intel. It's going to take a while because this autonomous system number was huge. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do, if I go back to the presentation here, So we've enumerated our autonomous system number and we've fed our autonomous system number to AMAS Intel to find more routes. Um, you can pull autonomous system numbers from tools like ASN Lookup or uh, Metabigor, um, which is cool. But uh, usually I start off by hand doing most of the autonomous system number stuff because I don't want to get screwed picking up infrastructure that is not the target. Um, just in case, you know, you know, like you saw in the first instance when we put in Office Depot, there was that Office Depot Europe one, and I couldn't figure out if it was uh, really quickly if it was in scope or in, ex, uh, excluded from scope. Well, that might show up in some of these automated tools, and I wouldn't even notice because I'm just taking the IP ranges um, uh, from these tools. So I usually do that version, um, that version uh, manual or that technique manually. So here's our enumeration, right? Here is, I've done the same thing with Twitch and the slides. You guys have probably already seen these. So now we're going to check out reverse who is with Hoxi. So reverse who is is taking the, it's going to a website that aggregates who is data for, you know, pretty much the whole internet. And um, I use Hoxie.com. And here, if I just search Office Depot in Hoxie.com's database, I like Hoxi because they give you a ton of API uh, searches for virtually like no money. I mean, it's some money, but it's uh, the API is pretty cheap. If I just search Office Depot here, you can see I get uh, who is record information, um, where I can do uh, who is lookup or a, a lookup on just other domains that have registered with Office Depot Inc. Um, under the registered contact of the company section or the uh, Office Depot Inc. under the name section of the registrant contact. Um, you could also do it via the registrar itself, but not everybody registers their own domain. Um, so you can see here, uh, you'll get hyperlinks. And uh, I'll go by the company name for right now is what I usually key on. Um, if you click on the company name and say, I'm not a robot, uh, here you can see everything that um, that has that same company name in there. Who is data? Um, so uh, this is uh, this is a lot of what I think is parked data, right? So uh, Max Depot, uh, Depot Max Mobi. They're pretty much probably parking all of these domains. Uh, so this technique, reverse who is, is what I would call medium fidelity. Uh, is a medium fidelity technique, right? I may be able to find something in what returns here. It's going to take me a lot of work, though, right? I'm going to have to resolve all these. I'm going to have to figure out which ones point to uh, real uh, real domains, et cetera. Um, and then I'm going to have to feed those back into my seed list, all the valid ones. But it would take me a long time. Um, right now, this gives you up to 100, uh, 100 domains back. Um, and you can see the total is 2,587. Um, so uh, you'll have to register an account and then use the API to pull back the full list. So in the demo here today, um, this is enough to probably get you started with Hawaxi or any Whois database that does the same thing. Um, and uh, yeah, so don't, uh, uh, you know, at your own leisure, you can look through the reverse Whois data. All right, so uh, I'm not going to use this here. We'll move on to the next step of the methodology. Um, you can automate some of this. Like I said, it's still medium fidelity data, but you can automate all this uh, using the Hawaxi database and the API call with a tool called DOMLink. Um, I just did it manually, or you could do it with curl or whatever you want to do. 
Uh, but um, there does exist a tool specifically for Waxy that will pull down all this stuff. Okay, so now I want to find more seed domains. We're going to do some add and analytics relationship mapping. So uh, built with is a site. Um, and uh, built with allows you to enter in uh, anything here. Let's see here. You can tell I'm on the this with my kids, right? Power Rangers movie, right? <laughs> uh, so let's search Office Depot. I think it's .com, right? Yeah. OK. Um, so here is OfficeDepot.com's uh, technology data, which we're not actually interested in the technology data right now. Um, we want the Relationship Profile tab right here. And what this will do is uh, basically uh, Office Depot or any site has a set of ad or analytics trackers that they're using. And when you go to this relation profile tab, it'll tell you all of the ad and analytics tracker codes or tags, they call them, um, that they've used that are on their main website. And you can surmise that they probably use these same ad and analytics codes um, in other sites that they have online. So you can scroll down here and you can see, uh, you know, the main domain officedepot.com. And then you can see that, well, their tracker is also on officedepotrewards.com, which I'm pretty sure is interesting to us. So let's grab this and check out what this is. And if I click on this here, this will actually take me to their, um, to their uh, thing. Okay, so that's a blank page, but resolving. Uh, so I'm gonna put it in our list. Uh, I know it's resolving because I get a favicon back here, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and put a new seed in our list. All right, let's also go and check back to see if anything else came back. Yeah, one last school.com. They own school.com. That's a should be a very sought after domain, it seems like. Um, okay. Cool. Uh, let's go back to built with. What else do we have that's using the same ad and analytics trackers that, uh, yeah. Office Depot rewards. Elf yourself, I have no idea what that is. Solutions at Office Depot, that's a subdomain. My work life rewards, Office Max perks. So there's a ton of pretty valid stuff in the, what I would say is pretty valid stuff in, in this section, right? Office Depot.help, probably not. But um, I will probably grab a ton of these, um, visit them and see if I can just by inference uh, add them to, um, add them to our roots here. Um, but uh, for the purpose of the demo, I'm not going to spend too much time on any given, uh, on any given technique, because uh, we have a lot of stuff to get through. OK, so um, you know, you're going to parse this for whatever you need. And uh, we'll move on. Oh, yeah, it was that ad campaign where you took a picture of yourself and put the face on the elf, and they danced around to music during Christmas. I remember that. I absolutely do remember that, the elf thing. OK, so ad and analytics trackers. You can correlate them to other sites and get new seed domains and subdomains uh, for your main target here. OK, so you can do this in the command line with a script called get relationship. Um, you won't be able to hyperlink right into the rest of the information that built with has on it, right? So uh, it's up to you whether you want to give that up by doing this on the command line. Um, but uh, there is a way to automate this if you're going to build some tooling of your own. Uh, the next thing I can do is I can grab the uh, copyright text in terms of service and the privacy policy from OfficeDepot.com. So let's see if we can find anything doing that. Just go down here, and we're just gonna just gonna grab this. Search on Google. We're gonna minus out dub dub dub. So 
So we can get some subdomains here, business.officedepot. Uh, JB2 vendors. So we're getting mostly subdomain data here. We're not getting a bunch of roots. Um, here's one, login for all. Not them, obviously. All rights reserved by login for all. So self-sustained site probably handles paycheck data for a company like Office Depot. So not in scope. All right. So really, all we found was a couple of subdomains. That's fine. We could. Oop! I think I stopped sharing. My bad. Sorry, my bad. Stop sharing there for a second. This bar is like right in the way. Let me put it up here. Cool. Um, so there is a business solutions division login on its own subdomain uh, at uh, uh, JB2 vendors, which this seems interesting to me, right? Any login portal for vendors or partners or whatever um, is usually interesting to me. So I'm gonna grab this just in case for some reason we don't get it when we do subdomain enumeration up Office Depot, and we'll put it there. Cool, so we're good there. All right, so um, normally you can use Shodan to do a bunch of search operators on uh, on finding stuff. There's a ton of automated tools that you can use to parse Shodan. Uh, uh, yeah, so I am not a Shodan master. Mostly what I do for Shodan is parse Shodan for subdomains, and I use automation to do that, which I'll show off when we get to the subdomain finding section. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I'm not going to do too much here, um, to find the tech stacks and the relationships and stuff like that. You can find a lot of great stuff on Shodan. So, um, there, the best primer I've seen for Shodan is actually Shodan's, uh, like books, uh, their eBooks that they have, um, associated to how to use the search operators. So you can check those out. All right. So now the biggest part basically. Um, so LinkedIn JavaScript discovery is the first part of subdomain enumeration. So we have a bunch of seeds. Now we need to enumerate those seeds for subdomains. All right, so we're going to use burp for this uh, first part. Um, I have both burp 1.7 and 2.0 running on my machine, um, right? Um, I prefer to do this workflow in 1.7. And if you think about the benefits of 2.0, uh, it's an updated scanning engine with updated checks or moderately what they consider to be a better crawler, but I don't think it is. Um, yeah, so uh, we're going to use, oh, I guess you guys want to use 2.0. Okay, we'll use 2.0, whatever. Oh, it already had burp open, my bad. So here's Burp 2.0. Um, the first thing we're going to want to do is open our browser. Go to the main page. Cool. So proxying through Burp, everything's good. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is set a scope item here. We're going to say uh, use advanced scope control so we can enter in a term instead of a absolute fully qualified domain name. And we'll say add. And here, just to be general, I'm gonna put in office just because I think that'll catch anything related to, um, to burp. I'm gonna say, nope, I still wanna accumulate stuff outside of the scope data. And then I can go back to my site map and show only in scope items. And that'll show anything only that has office in the URL on the left-hand side. Uh, so I have just landed on here. Here's what I see. 
and grab these. And now I am going to crawl these. So here's my domains. I'm going to just crawl them. Um, in the scan configuration for 2.0, if you go to scan configuration and select from library, I want the fastest crawler strategy. And I don't want the crawler ever to stop uh, because of an application error. So I'm going to apply those two policies. And then I'm going to add a resource pool of um, a lot. And I'm going to say, I'm just going to give it 100. We'll see if that, I hope that doesn't kill the stream. Actually, we'll give it 50, just so it doesn't kill the stream. OK. So Burp is off to crawl now. And you can see uh, we're finding more subdomains as well. And if you go to your dashboard, you can kind of see where you are in the uh, in the unauthenticated crawling type uh, workflow. So this will give us uh, some subdomains, um, maybe some new root domains, um, but everything that's linked on these sites will begin to see. It also gives me some kind of red issue here. Uh, okay. So later on, um, I will, I guess, walk you through what I use in Burp. Uh, so I use, um, I use a couple of extensions. I use Flow, so I can always see what's going on with Burp. It's just, uh, it basically is a logger for all the tools. There's it's Flow and Logger Plus Plus. I prefer Flow. Um, but I think they're they're both pretty comparable. Um, so you can see it spidering right now. Um, I use uh, the error extension uh, that catches and alerts me if certain errors are found on different technologies. Uh, so PHP, Perl, Java, ASP.NET, uh, all kinds of stuff. And you can add your own error regexes here if you want to uh, if you want to basically alert on them. And so this will report them if it sees errors using the scanner, intruder, or spider, which are in sequencer. I guess if I was doing sequencer work, it will uh, it will basically alert me. So I use uh, Burp JS Link Finder. Uh, so if you've ever used Link Finder by um, Gervin Gervato, uh, it basically parses any JavaScript file found through Burp, and it will then uh, it will then parse out links. And um, it's a little clunky to use in this way, uh, but it still works pretty well. Like what it's doing is it gives you the name of the JavaScript file, and then uh, and then it'll give you all of the parsed out links with like some numbers, uh, which is cool. Um, that's pretty cool. But uh, this output is not great. You have to export this log, and then you can uh, and then you can parse these back into your uh, browser to get them to go through the proxy. Um, or you can import them using a different tool. Um, so here you can see it's parsed. Uh, it's parsed some stuff. It says there's a Jenkins agent workspace directory, which could be definitely interesting. It's parsing a lot of JavaScript that exists here. So master min. Uh, yeah, so all of these paths I will have to um, Somehow, uh, if the crawler doesn't pick up these paths and these sites, then I'm going to have to um, get them back into uh, Burp somehow so I can do analysis on these endpoints. So this will take a while uh, because uh, this crawling and this link discovery will take a while because Office Depot is an e-commerce site, right? And they're serving up pages for items, and the crawler is probably taking um, you know, taking a ton of time to crawl a site like this. Uh, if I go back to the dashboard and I click on the scan configuration, I think I said fastest. Um, but you might also, for an e-commerce site like this, you might just want to get like the first few 
paths deep in a crawl. And so you might want to set like a crawl limit of like 10 minutes or something like that. Oh, I'm going to grab a drink of beer. OK, so this will keep on going. And we'll export these when we feel like it's done. The other extensions I use in Burp, if you want to just install them while we're doing other stuff, uh, Burp JS Link Binder to parse JavaScript, Hunt Remix. Uh, Hunt will find parameters that are most likely vulnerable to different stuff, um, different types of vulnerabilities. Burp Bounty, um, this one we'll talk about kind of at the end. Uh, it's pretty sick. Um, it's also called, uh, I think, Active Scan Maker or something like that. It has a different name now. Whistler, I only have this one installed because I found a web service with the Wizdle the other day. So I installed it to parse the Wizdle and let me fuzz it through Intruder. And then this is the one where that issue is coming through on the dashboard. It's called Software Vulnerability Scanner. It's from the Volners team. Um, and uh, this is uh, this is a pretty sick plugin. It has a whole bunch of built-in vulnerability checks. Most of the logic here is based on parsing the response of a visit to some type of URL. Um, and then looking for uh, looking for a value or a response code, and, uh, and or a version number, and then telling you that there might be a vulnerability based on technology. So Volners is uh, pretty sweet. I use it uh, recently a lot. Okay, so we'll let that go. Okay, so this was the same example with Twitch, right? I opened up Twitch, which had a lot of stuff. Uh, gave it um, gave it a keyword, cut down the scope. That was my scope. And then uh, after spidering in 1.7, uh, lots more scope. So link discovery is the first thing I do. I do it through Burp. Um, and then you can export all of this stuff if you have Burp Pro through the engagement tools, which uh, I'll do when our run finishes. You can do the same work with Hack Crawler or Ghost Spider. I, I don't usually. I usually do this manual. I see someone saying that like I do a lot of this work manually. I usually do this first section manually until I get to subdomain enumeration, because um, there's not a lot of enumeration that allow me to refeed in new seeds if I find them in these first four steps. Right? If I find a new seed, uh, my script Hunter.sh, which is just a Bash script, requires me. It would then require me to like stop the script re-add new seeds and then run it again. Um, so I'd rather just start with all the seeds that I've found so far. Plus, you can miss a lot. Uh, plus, you can miss a lot of stuff if, uh, if, you're, uh, if the ASN enumeration is off or you can start scanning stuff that you're not supposed to. Um, you can tweak your scope rules and burp a lot to get the right uh, to get the right domains. So there's a lot of manuals tweaking in the first four steps that I might have to do to kick the project off to the automation. OK, so what else can we do here? We can analyze some um, JavaScript um, automatically. Um, you could see that, uh, that one of my burp extensions is doing this, but it's focusing on parsing JavaScript for um, endpoints, not subdomains. So there's two tools that you can use is a subdomainizer and a subscraper to do this. And you can point it at your JavaScript files, and it will parse out subdomains and cloud, uh, cloud services that might be associated. And it'll also try to find keys for you. Um, I have this currently disabled right now in uh, my automation. Um, but a general way that you would do this is you would go to burp, and you would go to your targets, and they're already starting to be spidered. Um, and let's see here. We can search. And then you can just grab all of the uh, .js files. And so you can click these. There's a lot because uh, it's not being like sorted and unique. You can grab these. Copy the selected URLs, and then uh, you would then run um, Whistler or um, Subdomainizer on all of your JavaScript files. Now there are some things like a Hack Crawler that will, if you could feed them these domains or these URLs, then they'll find JavaScript files for you, and then you could feed those JavaScript files to another tool. Um, you could do it either way. You can do it by just copying out a burp, 
or you can uh, you can grab some automation to do it. Okay, so subdomain scraping uh, is the next section. Uh, so uh, I'm pretty sure you already know kind of some of these tools. Uh, so we're going to go over them uh, really quickly. Um, but I use a mass and subfinder. We're going to skip this. Um, so a mass uh, enum is the first tool that we'd use here. So let's grab that. So a mass enum will run on a list of routes. We'll just run it on officedepot.com right now. And this will go out to all of these sources, Census, Robtex, Wayback Machine, Netcraft, Security Trails, CertDB, SSL Spotter, and try to find references for subdomains of, um, of, uh, of this target. Here you can say it's querying all of these sources. Man, this text is big. I just wanted to make sure you could see it. Can you guys see the text OK? All right, so we're finding a lot of subdomains. That's good. Is this good so far? The training okay? Walking through the tools and kind of the methodology from the beginning? Is that uh, kind of what you guys wanted, hopefully? All right, I should say all, not, uh, not guys, all, everyone. Cool. All right, so we're starting to pull down subdomains for this target. And as we get these, um, we will dump them in our mind map. No, not as we get these, but when it's done, we will dump these in our mind map. So I've shown you kind of how to do it manually. And there's two other tools we're going to use like this. We're going to use subfinder. And we're going to see um, subfinder in a mass and a couple of other tools. They're all command line tools, so you can just run them um, as a command line person, uh, as a command line per like using the command line, right? So it's not much different, right? All of them have some kind of, uh, you know, syntax, and you drop in your root domain, and it will go find subdomains from different sources, right? So I don't know if I need to go over all of them, um, but I will show you, you know, kind of what a recon framework looks like. So if I go to here, um, I have a script that uh, that I've made. It is what I call a tier four framework. It is just automation at its easiest, but it's called Hunter. Hunter, the third version, and I can give it uh, Office Depot. OK, so what my script does is it just runs a whole bunch of tools. Uh, it's doing the same thing that we just did manually, a mass, right? That's the first one it's doing. And it starts the subdomain enumeration right off the bat. So while I'm waiting for the subdomain enumeration to go, because it is the longest part in the process, I am heading over to GitHub. And I have built in my script just to echo out these clickable links for me to go start looking for passwords and Docker config files and pen private files and S3 config and HG password and Git credentials, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, for this company. So if I open my browser here, and I have my shell on the left, I can, where am I? Uh, here. I can click any of these. And this will go to GitHub. And I can start doing GitHub dorking while uh, while I'm waiting for um, for my subdomain enumeration to finish. Uh, so here you can see um, lots of references to officedepot.com and password on GitHub. And if you want this, I've released it. Um, they're just like text strings, right? It's not like a tool that does anything for you. You can just hyper click them out of your terminal. Uh, they're on the next slide. So where's the slides? 
they're after subdomain enumeration somewhere. I don't know, there's somewhere in these slides, Jesus. Who organized your slides, nerd? Someone has the link from one of my previous presentations. You can also just drop it in there. Uh, it's a gist, and it was a private gist that I only shared with people in training, I think. Um, but I put it in the latest version of the... Maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't give it out to people. I thought I did. Hmm. Okay, let me see if I can find it and give it to you guys. Hold on. Okay, all right. Hold on, I'll give it to you guys. I'll drop it in the chat, one sec. Do it on a different monitor so you guys can see all my secret gifs or gifs, whatever you want to call them. See if you guys can access this. So the reason I am not using a tool, because there are several that do GitHub analysis, is many of the tools that do GitHub analysis for these dorks. Um, yeah, is it is it git? It's gist, right? Gist with the yeah. Phonetically, what is it? Yeah. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> um, so the reason I'm not using some of the tools that do this method automatically, right? Like looking for this kind of stuff in GitHub is because what they want to do is they want you to specify an organization. They want you to go to officedepot.com's organization and then their tool will go to that organization and parse through it for all kinds of, uh, all kinds of stuff, like all kinds of um, uh, keys and you know this kind of stuff we're looking for here. Um, but I don't want to actually go to the organization at all. What I want to find is just a general search across all GitHub um, that uh, is not related to the organization at all. Um, I want developers who have accidentally synced their bash profiles um, to uh, to GitHub. I want people who have um, who have committed source code incorrectly as public instead of private. I want uh, you know partners who have done the same thing, who have committed source code to work on it, um, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, here we are with this. And while my subdomain scanning is, I'm manually looking through uh, references here of pages that have uh, passwords and um, configs and stuff like that. So this is like a lolly file. Um, yeah, this is not anything good. You can sort by um, languages, or you can filter by languages on the left, which might help you if you have compiled code languages or semi-compiled code languages. That's probably what you want to look through first. PHP, Java, um, JSON, config files, ASP. Um, you'll want to look through these. And then you can also sort by most recently indexed, so the newest stuff first. I spend on GitHub Recon uh, probably, I don't know, uh, maybe an hour, maybe. Um, if it looks like I'm finding stuff, then I'll, you know, whatever, I'll, I'll stick with it. If it doesn't seem like the organization is big enough to have that problem where they've leaked stuff online, then, uh, then I'll move on. Do I check Bitbucket? I do not check Bitbucket right now. It's a great idea. Um, I don't really have, I know that Bitbucket doesn't let you search across organization, I don't think. Um, so I can't do the same thing like I do here, which is like search all GitHub, right? I don't think I can do that in Bitbucket unless, unless, I, unless you know of some way to do it. Um, okay, so my automation is running while I'm looking at this kind of stuff. A mass is still going. We also ran uh, a mass in a, another terminal window over here. Still going. Lots of subdomains for a big, big company, right? Office Depot's big, big company. Okay, so this is still running. Let's go back to the presentation. I'll close these. Cool. 
All right. So uh, a mass, when it finishes, it'll give us a table that'll also uh, let us understand more of the uh, infrastructure separation of OfficeDepot.com, like where all of the infrastructure lies, what autonomous system numbers it's broken up into. Jeff Foley did yesterday a whole class on a mass. Um, I really think this table is underplayed. When we get done with running a mass, it will spit out this table, but it'll tell us where our found subdomains uh, where they lie as far as ASN numbers. So we'll be able to see uh, the kind of technology partners they partner with. We'll be able to see if we missed any AS numbers of theirs possibly that we can go back and do a mass intel on. Um, so this graph is super cool, uh, but I can't, we can't see this until it's done running and a mass will take a little bit with this large of a scope. Okay, so subfinder is a second tool here. Uh, I've, automat I've automated Subfinder, Amass, and all these other four tools you're going to see. Basically, I run all of them um, concurrently um, uh, with certain command syntax, and then cat all of their results into a file, and then sort and unique them. So uh, nothing crazy about this. This is written by Project Discovery. Um, it has some different sources than Amass ha than Amass has, so uh, that is why I use it, and it is pretty stable. So this is uh, another source of subdomain scraping. Um, GitHub subdomains, this script is absolutely epic and it also runs in my automation. I would run it live for you. Um, it's part of this repo right here, like Wendell. But uh, I have to put in my API key, so. So this is GitHub search. Um, he has a tool, like a whole bunch of tools for GitHub, right? Um, get GitHub users, um, get secrets, get endpoints, get employees, doing some of that GitHub dorking we were doing. He has scripts to automate some of this, um, get history, um, and then like a, here's his database of file dorks, file names, um, names for subdomains, all kinds of stuff. Um, I'm using right now uh, GitHub subdomains. And what this will do is it will go out to the GitHub API and search for my root domain, and it'll find all subdomains in that source code. Um, similar to what we were doing, you know, just on the site, but now it's parsing out instead of looking for secrets right now, we're parsing out subdomains. Um, so that'll run as part of, uh, my automation, um, here after a mass is done. So mass will run, subfinder will run, uh, GitHub. Um, yeah. How often do you run your hunt script on a target during the course of hunting for bugs? I mean, usually just once. Um, I'll run this, I'll get the subdomains, and I'll start looking at the sites. So, yeah. Okay, so let's uh, let's grab what we have from a mass in this window since we ran it on its own. Normally, I would just parse this with bash, but that's okay. We'll grab this the hard way. Lots and lots of subdomains. Okay, we'll take what we have so far. Um, we will I gotta copy it. Thanks. You could also just do this from the output file, but we haven't finished it yet. So I'm giving you guys kind of like a half-baked version. All right. We'll call this uh, OD subs. Okay, we'll cat. OD subs, and then we don't want uh, we don't want uh, average, right? Anything else that would muddy up this output? I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Cool. 
All right. OD. Okay, cool. Uh, so OD subs two is what we're working with, um, and then we will uh, we'll take these, right? And now we'll put them under our uh, under our mind map. So we're in Office Depot. Get ready for this to get big. There we go. So we have a large tree of subdomains here. Now, these are all scraped from different sources under Office Depot. I'll just uh, minimize it for now. If I can find the minimize button, geez. There it is. Okay. Um, these are all from different sources, so they're not they're not compared to, or they're not can they're not guaranteed to be up. So you know, we might have scraped one of these from like Virus Total or something like that um, out of this giant list of subdomains, and uh, it might no longer be online, right? So we have to verify these are online. So uh, we use Tom Nom Nob's tool, HTTP Probe. Uh, to do this. So we'll just say cat uh, od subs2 into HTTP probe. And this will basically find everything that has a live um, a live web server running on it. And this will be where we'll start to hit actual sites. So yeah, it'll basically filter down the list of stuff that has web ports on it. Now, remember that the first, uh, remember that this is just web ports, right? There still might be valid subdomains that are hosting services, right? Port level services. So um, you don't want to throw away that list and just go after some of this. You're going to want to save the list of subdomains, the raw list that comes out of um, your subdomain brute forcing and scraping. Uh, you're going to want to save that to do port scanning on because um, indeed, some of them might resolve still and have service level stuff on them. Right now, we're mostly um, mostly we're looking for uh, for websites. So what I'll usually do is in my project, I'll say that um, here. Oh, is that what I did? Yikes! I'm an idiot. I put them under. Oh yeah. There you go. That's right. Office Depot. Why can't I collapse Office Depot? That's weird. Usually you can collapse this node here. Oh, there we go. Cool. I don't know why there's not like, not like a button there. There's usually like a button like there is here. Oh, well. OK, so under Office Depot, we have a ton of stuff. Um, but actually, I'll separate this into, um, I'll say raw domains. And then HTTPS links. So I'll grab these. Throw them in there. OK. Let's see how we're doing with, OK. So our subdomain finding has finished. Uh, another option instead of HTTP probe is HTTPX. Uh, yeah. Um, I just use HTTP probe because it's what I'm used to. I don't really know the benefits of HTTPX by Project Discovery yet. I just know it exists, so I'll check it out sometime. So here's that ASN table we were talking about um, when the subdomain enumeration finishes. And uh, you can see that um, 338 uh, names discovered, um, some of them from certs, from cert sources, some of them from DNS sources, APIs, uh, et cetera. Uh, most of their infrastructure looks like it lives either in Amazon or this Office Depot ASN, which is indeed the one that we did earlier. Uh, we did uh, AMS Intel on this. 
I don't see anything. I don't see any sub. I don't see any autonomous system numbers that we missed here. They're using Salesforce for one of their sites, Oracle, Cloud, probably. Um, yeah, a lot of Amazon, a lot of stuff hosted on Amazon infrastructure. I don't know what the fuck this is. James Tower, Media Design. Uh, yeah, cool. All right. OK, so we have everything cool. running through uh, HTTP probe. And now we have live web servers. So here's where we get to doing some actual analysis. Uh, so these links, um, I will take these and dump these as output somewhere in my mind map. And you'll notice that. Office Depot is a large, large project, right? They have a lot of subdomains. They're going to have a lot of HTTPS links. Um, that's great. And tracking in a mind map, you can see it gets kind of large. Um, in some cases, when the project gets too large, I'll use a spreadsheet, right? Like spreadsheets are actually pretty easy to track all this stuff in as well. Um, this one is getting on my nerves a little bit. So, you know, maybe I would switch at some point. Uh, but uh, yeah, who knows? Okay, so we're going to say HTTP probe. Okay. All right. So now. Um, there's two ways that you can start analysis from doing your recon, right? Oh, we've done a piece of all the recons, right? So uh, we've done subdomain enumeration with a mass, uh, with a mass. Um, we've piped it through HTTP probe to get HTTP links. Um, now we could we could go off uh, and do other things, but um, the automation script or the framework that you're running with, like my Hunter script, is still running, still running a mass, and it's going to run three other tools. So we're just going. I would normally start looking at some websites while this is going on, while the automation is still kicking off. So uh, now we have uh, you know, the regular Office Depot running through Burp. Close this. And usually I will grab like, I don't know, five or 10 sites at a time. And I'm just going to start eyeballing these. You can do two things at this point. You can start going to the sites manually through a browser and just start you know, hacking them, right? Like a lot of people ask like, oh, what do you do with all this recon data? There's no magic trick. Just like fucking open the sites. Open the sites in a browser, start hacking. There's like no, um, there's no magic trick to this. Um, the way I track my work is I just fill these with orange if I'm working on them. And grab these. And then I will put them through my browser and we will start hacking. So I have a Chrome extension here called OpenList. And it just allows you to paste in these links and open them as tabs. You'll see that they'll they're automatically parsed through Burp here. You can see us start to build out build out more of a site tree, more of a dashboard and sitemap. And then we can just start going to these. Many of them will redirect to uh, to the main page, right? So we don't really care that much. Um, Okay, so Office Depot, business at office depot.com is not the main page. So uh, I'm going to keep this one. Uh, images, don't really care. Custom error message. Access denied. It's a web server based error, I believe, it looks like, not like a cloud proxy. So I might want to do content enumeration on this. Uh, business.office depot. Yep. Want to do that. It's not the same as this site. This is managed print services and this is business. Um, this redirect the main site. Uh, business solutions division also want to do that. That's their ping identity page. So it's, uh, it's a subdomain, uh, it's a subdomain 
that is using a service by ping identity. This might be actually a vulnerability. This might be a subdomain takeover for ping identity. I'm not exactly sure uh, if, uh, if ping identity is takeoverable. Uh, let's see here. Can I take over XYZ? So it's not in their database. So uh, can I take over XYZ, the site I was just on? I'll go back to it. Is a database of services like Akamai and AWS S3 and Bitbucket. And if they give you a 404 not found or a certain error message, uh, fingerprint basically, if they're vulnerable to subdomain takeover, the idea that I could register on this site ping identity as uh, whatever this domain is and take it over. And then a subdomain or a C name of Office Depots would be forwarding to uh, a site that I control. Um, so I've inherited some trust in, uh, in their users. It's easier to fish people because I have a domain, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, this is a project. Can I take over XYZ by, um, uh, by at Overflow? And it's the first place I go to see if, uh, if, see if this service that I've landed on might be vulnerable to subdomain takeover. And eventually, I'll use some automation to do this. OK. Uh, ping, and then I'll just Google it. If I can't find anything there, I'll just Google to see if I can, you know, find any references of subdomain takeover. I don't see any. Uh, so we'll just table it for now. Put a pin in it. Keep it up though. Uh, 404 not found. Um, this is an application error message. So I'll do content discovery on this. And same thing. I'll probably do content discovery on this. So. Let's see here. So we're going to work on business. This one, MPS, probably short for managed print services. And then we will grab our methodology. I'm going to collapse this. These. And for every site I'm inspecting, this is what I check. So right now, um, these are good. I don't care. Like, they're not interesting, so I put them in gray. Uh, orange is still working on. And here are the questions I'm going to start asking for this website. Um, how does it handle special characters in the search forms? Uh, how does this particular application reference a user? Are there multiple user roles if I can find them? Um, what are the dynamic parameters of this site once I spider it? Does it have an API associated to it? What are the parameters uh, that reference a path or a URL? What are any errors? Um, yeah, I'll upload this template when we're done. Uh, I'll upload the whole thing um, so you guys can use it. Um, are there file uploads? Um, are there logic flows, step-based shopping flows, or checkout flows, or business partner flows? Um, I will do content discovery here. I will look at the JavaScript. I will look at the JavaScript on this site and find all the paths that are referenced in the JavaScript. And I will do uh, directory brute force with uh, FF or FUF, whatever you want to call it. Um, I will try to figure out what uh, uh, CWEs might be associated here um, and technologies it's using. I will do port scanning. I will keep track of interesting endpoints here. Those are Teslas. And then I have a place for random notes. This is usually like the very light version of a methodology um, I'm going to look at for a site like this. Uh, and um, yeah, I'll just start. So. Um, technically, I'm not allowed to like hack on screen on bug bounties. That's kind of like not great. 
but um, there is a login to the business uh, uh, the business solutions division. So these are tied business solutions division and the managed print service. This is tied. Oh, this looks good. Uh, manage print services. Why do I say this looks good? People asked me this on Twitter the other day. They're like, um, why do you say that looks good? Uh, I don't know. I just have a feeling like this is a custom coded login form, right? Which means it's probably custom code. It doesn't look like any framework I've seen in the past. Um, the design of it is kind of simplistic, meaning they didn't put a lot of time into designing it, meaning it's probably not a managed service. Um, if I go to view source, um, last time looks like it was updated was 2009. Uh, so this just gives me like, a, yeah, it looks like a 2000s login, right? So this just gives me um, old and probably vulnerable to a whole, you know, class of shiz. Also, here is their S3 bucket. Cool, good story, bro. I'm not going to try to break into their S3 bucket on stream. Um, and all you have is a form here. Uh, let's see here. No reference JavaScript? I don't think so. Nope. Nope. Cool. Yeah. So I'll do content discovery here first on dca.officedepot.com, uh, or I'll do this at some point. I'll also do content discovery on this domain, um, and I'll probably do it after this first slash and after the A. Um, I can use my extension, my built with extension here to kind of see if this is a CMS. I don't think it is. So custom site, there's a whole bunch of other things that are getting linked here. Um, there's some PDFs. So yeah, uh, I will spider this site. To go back to Burp. You can see all of this is going through Burp. And we are on business. Originally, I think we we're on, yeah, business. Okay. It's already in scope because of our wild code work called wild card scope rule. Um, we will scan. We will crawl. We will do scan configuration, we will do no no more than 10 minutes, and we will do uh, never scroll, never stop via application errors. We will add 50 threads to that crawl. And so business will be under our targets. It's right here. And we're currently crawling this right now. Um, yeah, so we'll wait to finish that. Uh, the crawl will pick up most forms or managed uh, so like most dynamic pieces of content you can see here that uh, dot dot do is uh, is a dynamic piece of content here that we pass data to um, yeah and then we'll fuzz the shit out of these basically okay so let's get back to the presentation Okay, so the script that I use the uh, to scrape GitHub for subdomains is called GitHub subdomains, uh, and then I scrape Shodan using Show sub go, um, which is another tool. And you'll have to have keys for both GitHub. Uh, you'll get a get, you'll create a GitHub API key. It tells you um, how to do it in the documentation for this repo, and then you'll need a Shodan API key to parse subdomains from Shodan. Um, and I run all of these in sequence in my tooling. Uh, subdomain scraping from cloud ranges. Uh, this is enabled in a mass uh, using this service called buffer overflow run or buffer over run. Um, this is the idea of going out to the cloud ranges and trying to find stuff in AWS GCP and Azure by parsing all the extensions for every HTTP site. In fact, Ben dropped a new service that did this kind of analysis. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, I can't remember what he called his domain. Uh, yeah, he just did a talk of it at the Red Team Village, and they have a new API that you can call to pull down cloud-based 
en enumerated subdomains, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, I wish I had it in the slide. Um, so you can use this URL here uh, with our domain and pull down subdomains that um, Sam uh, Sam Herb did. He did a DEF CON talk last year, year before, on scanning the cloud ranges and finding subdomains for your target. Um, but so we don't have to do all that manual work that he did. He created an API for us. It's included inside of Amass. It's one of Amass's sources. Um, so you can either use this by itself uh, as a curl call, or you can, um, or you can just use Amass, and Amass includes bufferover.run. There it is, recon.dev. Okay, so subdomain brute forcing. Um, I use a mask for this. You can use a mask enum slash brute slash your domain. Um, that's cool. I'm not going to do that on stream because brute forcing takes forever. Um, so uh, we won't do it on the workshop. Shuffle DNS also does brute forcing. In fact, this is what I used for a long time. Um, it is a wrapper around mass DNS, uh, and uh, it's written by the project discovery team. Um, I used it a lot in you know different areas. So, okay. So, what file do you use when you're using these brute force tools? Uh, I have one on GitHub. Um, it's linked in the slides, um, and uh, it's just a giant list of subdomains. Um, it's many millions of lines. Some some large number of lines. Uh, because we have a multi-resolver, because we have tools that use many resolvers to do this now, like MassDNS or like um, uh, like Shuffle DNS, uh, it doesn't take too long probably to run my all.txt uh, file. It'll take maybe 10, 15 minutes to do it, I think, for, I'm just guesstimating, on something like Office Depot. So um, there's also some other word lists you can use, not really relevant for us right now. Um, there's the idea of scanning for uh, deviations in the names or alterations or permutations. Um, this is things like looking for dev.company.com or dev1.company or dev2 once you find a given name at the top. Uh, these are also handled by a mass, so you don't really have to worry about them, but it's good to know that it does this for you. Yeah, if I were to scan off this box with mass DNS, it would it would hurt things. So, okay. So Fabicon analysis is new for this uh, version. I took it out of my um, out of my workflow, and then uh, I just recently um, added it back in. Um, so the idea of Fabicon analysis is kind of like what we talked about before with the adder analytics um, tracking, right? Uh, every site that is in this case on this slide, we're looking at Tesla. Um, in a bounty context, they use that little favicon icon for uh, Tesla. And uh, it's like the little T, right? The lightning T. And um, yeah, so you can uh, you can use a couple tools here to scan ranges, IP ranges, to look for the favicon icon. You could scan cloud ranges. Um, but also, you could just hash this favicon and do a search on Shodan for that favicon hash. Um, and it will show you other sites that have that same favicon, right? So you just take the little image, you hash it, and then you search uh, your org target and the favicon hash, which has a number. Um, and you can do this on the command line using the Shodan API. So this is one place that I do use Shodan. You can also, it also, uh, this tool, FabFreak, also has a whole bunch of fingerprints based on common technology favicon so spring boot and slack have like you know the slack icon and spring boot has an icon for itself you can scan across ip ranges and look for that favicon hash and it will tell you uh if uh, if that site is you know one of those technologies um so this is really helpful like if they've changed the default application path and you're using some tools like nuclei or something like that to go out and scan a whole bunch of urls um you can use this instead if they change the URL path and you're not finding anything. Usually, they don't change the favicon for the page. And you can use this tool to go out and fingerprint um, you know, some types of technology that you're interested in hacking. All right, so we have two sets of data from usually from doing this. right? We have a list of raw domains. Sorry. 
we have a list of raw domains and HTTPS or HTTP and HTTPS servers in our mind map. And um, uh, our raw domains are over here inside of seed roots, but it's a lot. Uh, so the raw domains, what we'll want to do now is feed them to a port scanner. And that's what I do in, in the automation I make. I think Daniel Meisler did a cool job. Um, a cool job uh, basically talking about how he automates his framework into small pieces of bash. I have them all mine in like one really gross bash file, uh, but he does his in discrete pieces of work. So he'll pass, you know, eventually what is a list of uh, just raw subdomains to a port scanner um, and then do some port scanning. So for this, uh, you can use a couple of different things. Um, I have been using lately, uh, let's see, uh, where we go here. Uh, I have been using DN, DNMAS. So I go here. Uh, DNMAS, what it'll do is it'll wrap around mass scan. So uh, normally you'll have these subdomains and that's great that you've enumerated all these, but you want to do a port scan now of them. The only problem is the fastest port scanner, uh, at least in my opinion, is MassScan. And MassScan only takes IPs um, as inputs to its tool. So DNMAS is a wrapper around MassScan that allow you to scan domains, um, which is useful. So you'll feed all your subdomains to uh, DNMAS and you will, uh, you will port scan them at a very fast rate. Okay, so this is the output of my really bad bash script, right? You can see that I have all of my, um, all of my raw domains that have other services on them, right? I've run all of my subdomain finders uh, AMAS, subfinder, find domain, GitHub subdomains, and show domain, or show sub go. That's actually the wrong name. I didn't change it. Um, here are all my raw domains. And then here are everything that have HTTPS on them down here. Lots and lots of websites. And we like to see this, right? We want lots and lots of websites so we have more opportunity uh, to hack. So some people talking about port scanning in the channel um, and that Nmap can do scanning just as fast as mass scan. Mass scan. I think that's a myth across most uh, that like got kind of perpetuated on Twitter, right? People were saying that you can use the min rate flag and the max retries um, in Nmap to make it just as fast as mass scan. That might be true for one domain, but when you feed in a list of domains, um, Nmap, it's just slow. Like, uh, so I have done port scanning for, you know, probably 10 years now. Um, I'm like 100% positive mass scan beats it. It's a rewritten TCP, TCP IP stack. Uh, it's closer to the kernel. Um, it is just a faster solution for, um, for it. Oh, Rust scan. Yeah, Rust scan. What, what did Rust scan do again? So talking about new tools. We have a link for it. Yeah, here we go. So I did tweet about it. Um, oh, okay. So it, uh, yeah, what does it do? Does it wrap around mass scan and then, yeah, that's what it does. It wraps around mass scan and then feeds mass scan to Nmap, which I am doing uh, manually, right? So I guess this is a tool that wraps it both and makes it easier for you to do this. Um, so yeah. Um, I don't wanna get into, I mean, I guess port scanning is not a crime, right? I definitely don't wanna use Rust scan though, cause I haven't compiled a Rust project yet. So um, let's see. Do I have DNS on this box? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's a wraparound two tools. It's pretty cool that you don't have to write that yourself. Um, but I have to I have to do Rust, which I don't have the environment. So yeah. OK, let's see here. Where are we? We have half an hour left, so yeah. OK, so Deanne, uh, Deanne Mascan will do the port scanning for you. And then you can take the output of this, of DN mask scan, uh, which is IP addresses and open ports. And then you can feed it to Nmap to do a full service scan. And when you do that, uh, after you feed it to Nmap with a full service scan, you give it an output file of OG. And then you feed the OG file to a tool called Brute Spray. And Brute Spray will use a small username and password list. Well, it doesn't have to be small, but I use a small one. Um, to brute force, uh, basically services that have you know credential logins like FTP, SMTP, SSH, Telnet, MySQL, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so so here it was I did give you guys the um, the gist. I told you I did. So GitHub dorking is something you can do. Remember I talked about. Um, I gave this link to you guys. It was in the slides. Um, if you want like a good primer on GitHub dorking for creds and stuff like that, the thing I do at the beginning of the process where all the tools are running, I uh, I use this video by the gentleman. It's on a GitHub's Bug Cred University platform, um, and it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it's good. Um, it's probably the best primer for uh, sensitive data exposure on GitHub. So check that out. OK, so like you saw, we have a bunch of HTTP links. This is not even all of them, right? Like we took half of the output of a mass and all of the subdomain finders, and then we ran it through HTTP probe. Uh, we didn't even take all of it, right? This is only about half of it, but that's a lot of, lot of websites, right? How do you prioritize like all of that, right? Well, you can go and just go to the sites and look at them one by one. Or you can just take all these and run a screenshotting tool on all of them. So uh, we have the full output here. Uh, give me one second. OK. So my Hunter script, which is just running a conglomeration of all those tools, gives me the raw domains and the HTTP probe, HTTP probe domains. So we can just say, um, we can basically give this list to a screenshotting tool like Eyewitness. Uh, so move this out of the way. Uh, Reason I do some of this stuff off of my screen, just to be honest with you, is this is my actual testing box, um, and uh, and if I go into wrong folders, I'll disclose private programs. So like I'm taking a terminal off screen to look at like uh, some of the stuff, the folders I have in my box for some of the tools. Uh, So we do something like uh, tools eyewitness, and then we can do like Python three. Make these bigger. Oh my god! I wish I could type. Python folder. OK. okay. And then we will say, give it a file, right, of which we will grab uh, root hunter out, which is where I store my files, officedepot.com. And then we want to give it the uh, HTTP probe file. 
the output of HTTP probe. Let's see. And then we will say, uh, uh, we'll just drop it in a folder there too. And it's going to take a while, but that's okay. I'll just call it iwit. And then we'll do dash dash web. And we'll say max timeout. I'll oh, just keep the max timeout the same. See if that works. Cool. So this is iwitness. This is going to go and screenshot uh, everything um, that we have in that HTTP probe file. If we refresh this folder, you can see it created a folder called iwit. And then you can just go see that it's starting to screenshot a whole bunch of tools. So this is a way on pare downing your analysis. Um, and you can automate all this, right? Once you get that HTTP from file, you use that file to feed a whole bunch of other tools. So this is going out and trying to screenshot everything. Uh, you, can, you can grab this. I can grab this iteratively just to show you like same kind of general process. So if you go into the folder that it's doing the screenshots for, Second, I grabbed the wrong folder. I mean, we got uh, we got twenty minutes left, so hopefully, I can get through some of the other demos. Okay, so here you can start to see. Um, it'll just screenshot some of these, and I'll use the same methodology that I did before, right? So uh, you can see the domain as the photo name, BSD SQPD8. Um, this is, again, their business solutions division. Uh, ACN Print, um, that seems like a custom web page, but it's in partnership with another company. So I'll look at this and see if it's a hosted subdomain or if it's actually Office Depots. If it's Office Depots, I'll definitely... Um, this is different than what the rest of their infrastructure look at it looks at look like. So I'll check this out. Definitely going to check this out. Clarity external access um, portal. Um, definitely going to try to mess with their help site. Um, we saw this ping identity site. So this is my process. I'll look through these screenshots and prioritize which domains um, I want to. Uh, check, right? This is a custom application error message. So I will do content discovery on this. Uh, question, do I still do live streams? Yeah, I used to do this on live stream all the time, right? I do like three or four hours of this right up to the point of where I exploited something. But uh, coronavirus has just put a lot of stress on a lot of people and the streaming kind of felt like work sometimes. So I don't do it uh, now. I want to get back to it though. It was pretty fun. CMS SQPD or SQ management. I will brute force that. These looks like these look like APIs. I will attempt to find API documentation and fuzz the API. And that's all the screenshots that we had gotten so far. But we're going to get about 200 back from the tool, or at least 400 back from the tool as it runs. It's still running. Okay. So screenshotting, cool. Uh, you can use other tools to do this. Aquatone, Eyewitness, uh, HTTP Screenshot. There's a whole bunch of tools, uh, but yeah. OK, so subdomain takeover. Um, this is the idea that we talked about earlier, taking over uh, a C name. Um, here is where I would use Nuclei. Let's go through Nuclei real quick. So like I said, you're going to use this 
HTTP probe out file for a lot of stuff. Uh, let me stop the screenshotting. Uh, and let me grab my notes here. So, so you can do something. Uh, Nuclei is a tool that is a scanner, uh, basically a, a scanner that looks for CVEs, login portals, interesting pages. It's by the project discovery team. Um, I should talk about it, I guess. Um, it has the most uh, subdomain takeover, uh, has the most subdomain takeover uh, signatures that any tool has right now. Um, so you would just do like uh, something like nuclei uh, L L for list, and you'll do like the folder roots. Uh, Hunter out, uh, Office Depot, HTTP probe. So give it a list and you'll say the templates I want to run is, uh, let's, let's look at the GitHub page. I think the template is, if you go to its templates section, it is called subdomain takeover. So you grab this. And you say everything in subdomain takeovers. And then you can give it an output, but I'm not really going to give an output right now. And this will attempt to find all of your signatures on subdomain takeover. So this will run. So uh, Nuclei, this tool, the scanning tool by Project Discovery, has several types of templates. Uh, one we're looking at right now is for subdomain takeovers. OK, so it didn't find any subdomain takeovers on that list. Cool. So we're done with that portion of the analysis. But they can also do things like uh, admin panels or verbatim CVEs. So this could get me in trouble. Um, yeah, I'm not going to do this. Uh, but you would just do this. And you would say, instead of subdomain takeover, you would say do all checks for CVEs. Um, and, uh, and so yeah, there's several things that Nuclei does testing for. There's a couple other tools that do this vulnerability analysis on a large set of HTTP links. Uh, one is, uh, well, I tweeted about a whole bunch today. Um, so uh, really, what you have is you have a list of HTTP links, and now you start feeding them to different vulnerability analysis tools. Uh, there's several that do this type of thing. Um, I am using Nuclei a lot and making some of my own Nuclei templates. Um, here, I'll post that for you guys in there. So you have. Uh, and you can see if you go into the CVEs directory, you can see some of these things like uh, Splunk sensitive information disclosure. The scanner is looking for this path, right? Uh, EN, Splunk D, raw services, et cetera, et cetera. It's looking for a 200. So these templates are really easy to make. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, there's a whole team at Project Discovery making these. Uh, so you can change the method. You can give it a path. You can give it a, you know, uh, you know, if you want a 200 or if you're looking for a certain type of word like license keys, um, that's what it's looking for here is a word license keys in a response to these URLs. So you can make your own templates to do cool stuff. And this is kind of the next level of recon. Um, after you find all the subdomains, you feed them to HTTP probe, then you want to find some just easy wins before you dive into each one of them individually and start, you know, hacking on them. OK, so what else do we got? OK, so uh, some automation stuff. Um, basically, any of the tools that we've talked about or you know, even the tools that you write yourself in like Bash or Python or something like that, if they don't support some notation that you like, like glob notation or range notation or something like that, uh, or they're unthreaded, um, or they're, you can't distribute them, uh, there is this tool called um, uh, interlace written by Michael Skelton that'll help you do some of this. Um, that'll help you do things like thread a tool. So Nikto, for example, is one of these 
old school, uh, but still being updated, uh, tools that looks for CVEs on a domain. And um, it's not threaded. And so you can feed it through interlace. You can say interlace-tl, all of your targets. And then say you want five threads you know, or 50 threads. And then the command that you want to thread, which is Nikto and your targets and uh, an output. And then it'll thread your tool for you. So Nikto is pretty old, but it still has a lot of really good updated checks and a lot of old stuff too. Uh, the reason you want to discount the old stuff is like, if you look at Office Depot, the program we're looking at right now, and plenty of other businesses that I've hacked, they're an old school company. They've got a lot of, uh, of PHP um, stuff going on. Uh, Solo maintain, maintains Nikto. Um, yeah. Uh, so um, yeah, so they've got a lot of like old technology in there, right? These newer tools like Nuclei are not going to have checks for some of those things. Uh, so could still be used, useful running something like Nikto on them. Do people still use Nikto? They do still use Nikto. Yes, they do. Um, there, it's slowly being supplanted by things like Nuclei, or uh, Jesus, what was the other the other ones? Uh, let's see here. Here we go. Um, so slowly being supplanted by things like Go Fingerprint, which was released by Static Flow and Nahamsek at the beginning of at the beginning of the week, or at the end of this week, or the beginning of DEF CON. Um, their fingerprinting tool to find some CVEs or interesting stuff. Um, this is an example of their engine that they're using. Um, and uh, you can see they're looking for Confluence and Splunk D and Tomcat. And so they've got some fingerprint checks in here. Uh, this is Nuclei that we've already talked about. Uh, Sniper is another really good one. Um, Sniper has a ton of built-in CVE checks that are pretty recent. Um, you can see last month, two months ago, six days ago. Um, so uh, yeah, so lots and lots of new school kind of CVE based um, checks coming in here, um, and then Nikto, right? So, I mean, relatively, like DB taste test was updated yesterday, uh, 20 days ago for outdated DBD, DBC stuff. But yeah, like something is like four years ago, right? So uh, it all depends. Uh, yeah. Cool. Uh, so all of these will take files as input. You can use these tools to do CVE testing across a domain. OK. So where are we now? Oh, no, did I close the presentation? That'd be bad. OK, so I already talked about HTTP probe, which is a glue that takes all my domains and parses them into, um, parses them into web servers that I need to check. Um, another. Another set of stuff I'll do on the HTTP probe output is check Wayback URLs, which will tell me about the old URLs known for a domain. Um, Meg is one of those tools that you can do directory brute forcing with across many hosts. Um, so I could also run that on the HTTP probe output file and just check for things like dot environment or um, you know any type of simple path you want to check over a wide list. OK, so the next part of the presentation is talking about like if you wanted to put this all together into like a, you know, a tier or a, um, a framework, right? And there's several that exist uh, like myhunter.sh that are out there. Um, Ultimate Recon is one that I like um, to start off with. Um, all of the links are in the slides that someone posted. Um, and uh, yeah, all of these different GitHub projects are like C tier frameworks that are basically Bash or Python gluing together all of the tools that we talked today about. So Bounty Recon, um, Off Hours Coding Recon, Recon Tools, Auto Recon. Um, so if you don't want to, you know, like if you don't want to do any of this manually and you just want to run certain tools, you can definitely create, you can see this is in Bash, um, just like mine is. Uh, you can create a tool like this. The reason I like Ultimate Recon is uh, because he's using the nuclei checks that we were just talking about, and he's already got these built in. Um, so you can, uh, it will do all of your subdomain enumeration. It will 
uh, do your brute forcing. It will then take all of those uh, HTTP probe um, URLs and check them with nuclei. And uh, yeah, so that is this one. And that was an old screenshot. He's doing a little bit more uh, now as well. He does CMS detection with what web. He does cores misconfigurations with Corsi. Um, he does way back URLs uh, from uh, way back, uh, uh, what is that tool called? Uh, can't remember what the way back enumerator is though. Um, he's looking for HP smuggler, uh, HP smuggling with smuggler. Uh, what else is he doing here? He's taking all the JavaScript files and parsing them for endpoints, gathering the endpoints, and then giving you output. Oh, and then he's doing um, FFUF, uh, directory brute forcing on all the URLs. So yeah, so you could build this, um, or you could just you could build one. You could build a tool like I have, or like this guy has, or you could just use one of the ones that is already out there. There's several examples here. It just depends on what tools you want to use. Um, if you want to get a little bit more advanced, um, there's one called Lazy Recon, and, and these ones start to have like more tools as well. They take the screenshots, they're doing port scanning and technology mapping and stuff like that. They're doing subdomain takeover checking, etc. cetera. Um, then there's some for paid options like uh, Find Domain, which does several sub finders like I do, but also organizes everything instead of in text files in a database and texts you or messages you on Slack when you find stuff. Um, some other examples in this kind of tier are uh, Rock On. What about a continuous recon platform? So some of these are continuous. I haven't gone through to like really, uh, I haven't used them all yet. I've used like 90% of them. Uh, so I think Recon Pipeline. Yeah, Recon Pipeline is continuous. Um, recon Pipeline is actually pretty advanced. Um, and uh, yeah, so I would just check out which one fits for you, right? Um, the one that I, in the S tier, right, Intrigue has some cool stuff, but um, it's a hosted application. I don't know if a lot of people stand it up or not. Asset Node is a paid for. The one that is, that are the ones that are really cool right now are Jails, which is, I talked about in the, um, or I talked about, I didn't talk about, but uh, I will in a second, is a scanner for like CVEs, like we talked about with Nucleus, same idea. Uh, it's got a lot of cool checks in it. Um, but the two that I've used really recently that I really liked are Asmedius and Reengine. Um, and so these will abstract your recon into a GUI, into a web GUI, and you just give it a domain. And if you have all these tools installed and you set it up correctly, it will do all your subdomain enumeration. It'll do all your technology profiling. It'll do your port scans for you. You can download it, um, et cetera, et cetera. So like reengine is probably one of the more advanced ones, I would say, that's open source and free. Um, and then also inside here is like bounty.offensive, Hunter Suite. Some of these are for pay subscription model ones. Um, yeah, so be careful. Some of these engines are not used to the kind of command line tools that they're trying to cron up or something like that. Um, so for instance, Asmedius, when you give it a large word list to do your either brute forcing or your subdomain, your subdomain brute forcing or your URL brute forcing, it can die or hang because it's not used to um, those things. Um, and then re-engines, you know, sometimes the same idea. I gave it a scope of something like Office Depot, which is super large, and it crashed, and then I had to restart. So, um, and then we talked about nuclei, and that's it. So that's the recon methodology. Um, I did talk about uh, some. Someone asked me like, what did I use for Burp, right? So when I'm actually digging into the sites, what am I using? Uh, what extensions? So Link Finder uh, parses JavaScript. Hunt tells me about parameters that I might um, I might care about. Um, Bert Bounty. OK, so uh, I guess I'll just give you guys, guys this one. OK, so Bert Bounty or Automated Scan Checker is a Burp extension. Um, it allows you to make your own scan checks. It comes by default with a whole bunch of really awesome ones. Um, 
for XXE, XSS, um, and they will just run, some of them are passive, some are active, um, but here's one that I've been using to great success. So people, uh, you know, blind XSS is a vulnerability, class of vulnerability you can look at. Basically when you put an XSS payload um, in any field or parameter, um, if it doesn't pop up right away, there's a chance that actually it goes to a different system that someone's looking at and pops up on their side. And if you can craft your JavaScript payload to call home when that happens, it's called blind XSS. So many people use XSS Hunter. XSS Hunter um, is a site that will let you uh, basically create a payload and monitor when it calls home. So uh, this is XSS Hunter. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of you know already how this works. Let's see here. I don't have an active account for some reason. Okay, I'll use my buddies. No worries, he won't care. Okay, so eventually it'll give you, um, it'll give you some, when you log into XSS Center, it'll give you a whole bunch of payloads. And, uh, and you, they're for different contexts, right? This one's a basic XSS payload. This one's a JavaScript inline one. This one's for an input and this one's uh, an image tag. So it gives you a whole bunch of payloads. You can take your payload from XSS Hunter and basically you can create, I think I've made about 10K with this in the last week. Um, you can create a new active scan and just call it uh, blind XSS. And you basically load your XSS Hunter payload in here, right, that you got from XSS Hunter. And then you say, I want it to append to everything. I want it to append at the end of every path, every header, the entire body of the request, uh, every URL um, that I can find, uh, every multi-part attribute, right? And you just say add, and then um, there's no response. You're not looking for a specific response. And the issue name will just be blind XSS and whatever. Okay, and so now you have uh, a blind XSS um, scan here, and this will run when you do your active scans across dynamic parameters. So it'll shove your XSS Hunter payload everywhere, and then you wait, you know, days, and then eventually in your XSS Hunter um, uh, collected pages, you start to get back. Um, stuff, you start to get back uh, basically hits from your blind XSS payload. Um, okay, so I think that's mostly everything today. Um, Hunt, Burt Bounty to make custom, uh, to make custom scan checks. And then this is the CVE detector um, thing by Volners. It's now called Software Vulnerability Scanner, I guess they changed their name. Um, and I use this to, to do some analysis on web servers. And the rest is just manual web hacking. The second part of my methodology on how I do my manual web hacking, how I do my content discovery, et cetera, uh, will be out in a couple of weeks. I'm working on it right now. It should be out for bug crowds level up. Um, so hopefully that was useful for everybody. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's all I got for today. Thank you so much.